Alrighty, how are we team? So today, first we're going to have to go to a Simbrief at simbrief.com. Make sure you log in there. Head over to our dispatch. Um, my flight plans? I don't know. I use this for most flight simulators. You'll head over to my flight plan. Uh, we'll create a new flight plan. Um, had one before. Just go down to the airline field. Um, this is where you'll enter the field, uh, the call sign for your airline. So I'm going to go QF213 uh, and our departure airport will be Cairns. Uh, that's Brisbane. So Yankee Bravo Charlie Golf and Brisbane, Yankee Bravo Bravo November. It will autofill the alternate airport in for you, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, to enter your airframe. Uh, today we're using the 737-800, which is the base model for the X.11 game. Um, so this is, these all these fields are related to the uh, vertical navigation, which we're not really worried about. We're only worried about the lateral navigation, LNAV. Um, so we can see our waypoints for this routing. It's only a short flight, about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Um, so we go down, we can actually see a map of our flight here. Uh, so we'll be taking off to the south of Gold Coast Airport and then arriving into the city from near Stratty from Brisbane. So it's actually important that it doesn't actually register the runway you take off and depart on the FMS, so we need to actually understand which runways we're using. Um, so if we head over and we search the... Well, first we need to create a notepad, to be honest, so we can write all this information down. Well, let me just find a notepad here online. Yeah, no longer required. Yep, that'll do. Uh, Gold Coast runway map, it's always a good, good search. And yep, over the images, yeah, this one looks good. So we can see we have two runways, we'll do that same for Brisbane. Um, we're using the old Brisbane runway map. Um, I know they use a dual runway, dual parallel runway now, but not quite up to date with that. Um, all right, so let's write all this information down. Let's see, Gold Coast departing from the south, so we'll be looking at runway 14. Okay, um, so the departure airport will be Gold Coast on runway 14 towards the south and then as you can see we're coming into Brisbane from North Stradbroke Island so we go back to the runway map that would be runway 19 um, can write that down on our notepad so arrival into Brisbane runway 19 yep okay and that's pretty much all the information we really need. Just the runways, uh, the lateral navigation. Um, what else do we need to know? I mean, I guess could write down the cruise altitude. Uh, probably set that at 12,520. Looks about right for that sort of short flight. Um, speed. Let's go 250 knots. What else is important? Our climb and descent modes. We'll go for a little change mode. Just to maintain that speed. Um, that's pretty much all we need to write down in terms of notes. Um, so we're gonna have to, so we're gonna we're gonna go back to Simbrief. Um, just check everything's up to date. Go back up, stop, uh, generate the OPP. Yes, this is all good. And now that will actually generate a flight plan that we can actually chuck into our FMS for x 11. So if there's no errors there, that means it's all good. Um, you can slide down here. Yep, that's my basic information. Um, Paperwork documentation, if you want to read this, not sure why you want to read this. Um, and then if we scroll down further, yeah, we can using, if we scroll down further, we can actually see all the different 
FMS or flight plan uh, ex file extensions that we can use. So whether it be for X-Plane or types of aircrafts, jar designs, flight vector, all different things. Um, so we'll say we're using X-Plane 11. Some older aircrafts are only compatible with the X-Plane 10, 9 files, but 737-800 is compatible with the uh, X-Plane 11. So we're going to download that file and we're going to so we're going to explain, go to the outputs, go all the way down to FMS plans. As you can see, you already have an existing FMS plan. I like, always keep this clear. You know, we want to reduce the file size and compilation time. So remove that. Go to downloads. And there's our new plan downloaded. So we're just going to drag and drop. And that's all that really needs to be done in terms of file moving. Um, we actually have this open. Yeah. And let's head over to X-Plane. Okay, so we're here back in X-Plane with this Qantas 737-800 on the Gold Coast. Uh, just here at the gate, got to set up the aircraft now and the LDAV. Um, so let's head inside. Um, as we look down over here, go down to the FMS, which is here, find it right there. Um, and we'll just turn on the lights first. Just to keep this real professional. Um, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so we'll, we'll go down here. Um, so, it's going to be a couple of ways that you might be able to load this in. So, if we. Uh, so, we head over to the root menu. Might be in the pilot root list or the co root list. Just depends really if you save it or if you create it here so we'll just go to the co root list and there's our credit flight plan we're going to click on the left top left um just tap on it and then yeah you'll get this little pop-up message um not really important i don't think so um yeah it's just just double check the accuracy um so yeah so now the flight plan is actually loaded we did it in a couple of things we can actually see it on the, the multi-screen display we switch over to plan mode change the distance a little bit and we can actually if we go to the legs we're trying to step through this flight plan just clicking step um so we head down to the south the gold coast back up to brisbane and then into the runway 19. so we're gonna yeah so we spring back our map always keep this here uh, we double check our waypoints um, yeah, so keep that open. Um, right, so we can check all of our waypoints if they correspond to what we actually had planned for us. So if we head over, so if we head over to the departure. So if we head over to the departure and arrival. We can go to the departing. We'll be departing as we listed runway one four towards the south. So we'll just pick that. Sid, whatever it is, uh, execute that. Um, and then we need to do the same for the arrival. So we're going to arrivals, uh, the runway 19, the old Brisbane setup. Um, so you go across next page, next page. Oh, we'll do the ILS, uh, ILS Zulu for runway 19. Make sure to execute that. Okay, that's done. Okay, now we've done that, but we do want to check the approach. So we'll head over to Chrome, find the approach charts. It's lots of PDF files. You actually load this in with a couple of the plugins for X.11 with the iPad. Um, Search for Brisbane. Yep, there it is. Uh, ILS runway one nine. Will be one nine all left at the moment, which is the old runway one nine. Just open that. All right. So make sure you keep this chart open for when you want to complete an ILS approach. Where to intercept the ILS and the glide slope and altitudes. Go around procedures. Yep, so we we'll want to keep this one, this thing open here. Head back to X plane and uh, 
just want to check for any discontinuities in our legs, and we do have one. So it's really easy to click, get rid of the discontinuity, click on the previous or the above, click on that, execute, and that should remove the discontinuity. Um, so the FMS can do its thing and the LNAV. Since we're only applying the LNAV, the lateral navigation, we only need to know where we're going by uh, uh, laterally, not vertically. So the climb and ascent profiles are input. Um, so now we can enter all this information. Uh, initial climb altitude, we just climb straight to flight level 120. So we can plug that straight in to the 737. Um, we are cruising at 250 knots, but our V2 speed will be 198. Seems about right. Um, turn flight directors on. And we should be ready to go. The aircraft looks all set up for an LNAV departure and arrival. So now that we've tucked the flaps out, we actually go to runway 14 here on the Gold Coast. Um, just taxi towards it. Actually, it's quite a long way, so we'll just bring up the map and just uh, shakily teleport there. It's a bit quicker. Um, yeah, just drag ourselves over there. Yeah, that's about right. So we'll taxi onto runway 14 and just complete a normal departure. Let's check both ways. Clear of any traffic, no one on final. Uh, try our line ourselves well with the satellite. I think the trick is to use the master caution uh, chimes as a satellite. If you're in the captain's seat. So let's set the parking brake. Uh, everything's good. Yeah, better chuck the seatbelt so on. It's not going to be a great takeoff, to be honest. Uh, these lights on. Landing lights on. Um, okay, so we're just going to have the parking brake set. Throttle levers up to 40%. Uh, just wait for that to warm up. And then once that reaches 40, it's just going to release and we're going to set toga. A little bit of forward pressure on the yoke, just so it doesn't rotate too early. And I think we're good to go. So the airspeed is alive. Checked. 80 knots, checked. So 115, that's our V1. A VR will be one, four, five. Yeah, a little bit past that, but rotate. And we have a positive rate gear up. Right, a bit of crosswind here. Nose is a little bit high, but it's all right. We can match the climb profile. Um, yeah, so that looks good. Gear up. Push the nose down a little bit. Get a little bit slow. Nice view outside Surfers Paradise. Um, so now we'll want to turn on the autopilot. Easy. Uh, and then we'll turn on the LNAV, which should laterally guide us towards our next waypoints. Uh, I'm the LNAV throttle. We're uh, going to flight level change mode just to maintain 198 knots. And we should climb to flight level 120, follow our sim brief waypoints towards Brisbane. Uh, as you can see, we were departing from the south, now we're heading 
both bound towards Brisbane. Um, yeah. We're a little bit off where we were meant to turn, but that's okay. We deal with it. So as we approach our waypoint, we're actually aligned with it. Um, <clears throat> so when you're in LNAV mode, natural navigation, uh, aircraft should automatically go towards the next waypoint. Um, we did overshoot a little bit, skipping time there. Um, that's no worries. The auto part should bring us back on track. Um, is banking at our Normal default setting can actually make a bank a little bit more steeper by changing angle. Um, yeah, that should return us back online towards our desired path and trajectory. Great view outside um, of the Gold Coast. Don't have any orthos or anything at the moment. It's just Plug it up my RAM. Um, all right, let's get back to this. On target. All right, here we go. So now we're aligned. Uh, we'll retract the flaps. Now, as we head over to here, we can actually see. We can actually go direct to our waypoint. So we have Bravo, Oscar, Alpha, Tango, Sierra here. We actually want to skip couple of waypoints, we can go direct, uh, it's pretty simple, go to the direct in it, um, select the waypoint, and then just click it on the arrow, and then that will take us direct if we get revected by ATC, you know, hey, we've got a better routing for you, you can go through this, um, and that actually skips a couple of waypoints, reduces our distance, um, so it should be quicker now, and we actually also go direct to a waypoint if we want, um, so see here where we can type our waypoint we go uh, let's go bravo where's bravo bravo oscar oscar zulu echo so if we type that in and then we can just actually go direct to that if we wanted to so i guess this is the basic lnav um tips and tricks for the boeing 737-800 but it can actually apply to most aircraft Depends how you look at it. So we're just going to skip ahead and enjoy this final visual approach into runway 19 for Brisbane and I'll see you in the next video.